today we're making something different. In honor of the long-awaited Kingdom Hearts 3, I mean 14 years if you don't count all the remixes, 0.5s, etc. We are making a Baymax cake. As this is my first fondant cake, I had some imperfections that I wasn't happy about, but still it's a freaking Baymax in cake form. I loved Big Hero 6, watched it a dozen times and was thrilled that the movie, or to be precise, the characters and the setting would be in this game. If the trailer is any indicator, we'll be able to fly around with Baymax and you just gotta love that robot. So here it goes. First you got to make the sponge cake. If you don't feel like making a cake, just skip to the timestamp in the description where you will jump to the ganache. But apparently you're still here, so let's get down to business. Separate six eggs. The egg whites go into one bowl, the egg yolks to the other. Always be careful while separating your egg yolks. We don't want to waste anything. That's why I always separate them in another bowl, you know, to be safe. Now add 200 grams sugar into the egg yolk and mix it until the sugar dissolves. This can take a few minutes. The mass will get all whitey-ish and fluffy. Then add 100 grams sugar and a pinch of salt and beat that until it is fluffy. Get that into the egg yolk mixture and fold it in. Sift in 180 gram flour with a teaspoon of baking powder and fold it in as well. At the very end, pour in four tablespoons of vegetable oil and fold again. Don't ever stir it, else it will get hard and not yummy at all. Pour the dough into the widest tray you got at home, which you lay out with baking paper and off into the oven. Bake at about 170 degrees Celsius for 30 to 35 minutes. Be careful and check on the cake. You know the usual, know your oven. In the meantime, let's prepare the ganache. Welcome back for those who skipped the cake part. Of course, you can use any other kind of frosting or whatever strikes your fancy, to be honest. But the ganache tastes great and it is easy to make. Just simmer 300 milliliters of heavy cream and add 300 gram of bittersweet chocolate. Turn this stuff off and stir it until the chocolate melts completely. Let that cool off. Then let's whip it up to make it extremely creamy. Don't worry that the color gets lighter. When the cake is out of the oven, let's get down to planning. I mapped out how big the cake itself is and how many pieces I'll be needing here. In total, there will be four layers which I calculated a bit thicker, accounting for the ganache in between. I didn't want to have any surprises, so I like to plan ahead. Maybe that's a German thing? I don't know. And a little cheat sheet for the legs. Cut out the pieces of cake carefully and set them aside. I put the excess pieces in a separate bowl so that we can make Baymax's head and legs out of them. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Then the fun part. Let's layer those spongy cakes. The first two layers are the same size, so the placing wasn't an issue, but the smaller parts had to be a bit more on the back part. Meanwhile, I had to cut out my templates and contemplated where to start and if I have placed all the layers right. Ooh, my favorite part, the carving. I constantly checked my paper template to have the right shape. I didn't want to have the arms as fondant as the cake itself isn't that big anyway. By the way, I threw the carved out pieces to the other rests of the cake. When I was happy with the shape of my little Baymax, I slathered on the ganache to have a smooth surface. I let it rest in the fridge and got on to the legs and the head. For that I added a bit more ganache to the cake rests and netted them. Those would have been great for pop cakes, but they'll serve us just great for the head and the legs, of course. I took my template as a reference again and formed the head and the legs accordingly. 
Now I tossed those in the fridge and got the body out. I rolled out a relatively thin layer of fondant, which I surprisingly kept clean, but got tiny tears all over it. Like I said, this is my first fondant cake and I'm glad that I made my mistakes. I tried to smooth the fondant all around the body and partially tore a part of the arm. I've worked a lot with polymer clay and thought I could smooth it out, but nope, I failed. Horribly. When that was done, I covered the legs and head in fondant as well. Finally, I figured out how to smooth out the fondant when I was covering the head, so that was something at least. As I didn't want the hat to fall off, I got the sturdy straws out and cut them to the size of our little Baymax here. I guess one would have been enough, but better be safe than sorry. I made some touch-ups to get more detail in. And I tucked in those legs to have a smoother look overall. It's not smooth, but at least it's better than not tucked in. And I didn't want to forget the small detail of his chip entry part thingy. I mean, Baymax himself has a simple shape, so I thought that part should be missing. Finally, I add his face. I cut a long strip of black fondant and smooth that on. And now two dots and ta-da! Baymax has a face now. Now I finally celebrate the release of the game. Huh? Who's that? Oh, Barry! First Pikachu and now Bamax? Come on! As usual, the recipe for this cake is in the description below. Let me know if you are as hyped as I am for this game and if I should do more cakes like this. Drop those suggestions in the comment section below. Like to support our channel and subscribe if you don't want to miss our weekly videos.